welcome back to Paramedic Project. Thanks for joining us once again today. Episode on IV fluid bags and lines, how to deal with them, how to manage them, how to handle them safely in the pre hospital environment, and my big tips on how to prime these lines safely and well. So let's get to the three big points we're going to cover today. First of all, we're going to have a detailed look at the actual equipment, the giving set, and the fluid bag. Second, we'll touch on Ruby's rule. Third, I'll share with you my big tip on how to prime these lines really well in the pre-hospital environment. So let's get right to it. First of all, let's look at the equipment. Giving sets for starters. I think the first big thing we need to understand with these giving sets is when you start looking at them, there are lots of nooks and crannies, the port, uh, another valve, different places in this giving set where air bubbles can congregate. And those air bubbles congregate, particularly if you forcefully prime these, if you squeeze the bag and forcefully push fluid through this giving set, uh, you will find that you get a lot of air bubbles congregating in these different nooks and crannies. So we need to pay particular attention to those places of the giving set when we're checking it after we've primed it uh, to make sure there's no air bubbles there. So that's the first thing. Second thing, let's look at our fluid bag. As you can see, uh, it is clear. We can see through it. Just like a syringe of drugs we'd use, we can see through that vessel and there's no, it's no coincidence that this is clear also. We want to see through this bag and see exactly what the contents of it are, what we're actually giving. Now you might just say, well, it's just some type of IV fluid, but the most important detail is that it is IV fluid and there's not a big volume of air in that bag at all, as you can see. It's just fluid, no big volume of air. And just like any other drug, we need to treat this drug with exactly the same uh, exactly the same procedures, I suppose. We need to do exactly the same checks as we would with any other drug. And just like a syringe, when we prime that syringe, we push that little volume of air at the top of the syringe before we administer a volume of that drug. Before we administer this, we need to check that there's not a big volume of air in this bag as well. So that's why it's clear. We would never cover up a clear syringe when we're administering that drug either. And same goes for these fluid bags. We should never cover them up. We should never put a blood pressure cuff around those bags because we want to see at all times that we're actually administering fluid, the thing we want to administer and that we're not administering air. So they are the first big points on the equipment. Now let's touch on Ruby's rule. Now Ruby's rule says that we should never re-spike a bag. So let's look at that. You can see that this is a half empty bag. There's about 200 mils of fluid. And then you can see the bag sucks up against that fluid bowl, which is in the, which is in the actual uh, fluid bag. Now, the contents of these bags are packed that way, so there's no big volume of air in the bag. Let's just demonstrate that. So if we re-spike this, if we pull this spike out, hold it, and, uh, and then we re-spike it, you can see that bag, it kind of swells up with the weight of the volume of fluid. We re-spike it, and you hang it back up there and look at it side on, you can see now there's 250 mils of fluids and about 250 mils of air in the bag. And if that is then pressurized, and uh, our 250 mils of fluids runs out, all we're doing is pushing a big volume of air through our giving set into the patient's circulation with fatal consequences. So we absolutely want to avoid that. Ruby's rule, never re-spike an IV fluid bag. So that's another big point. Now finally, my big tip practically on how to prime these IV fluid lines really well in the pre-hospital environment. Now one of my mentors, he was very, very particular about how you'd handle these. He never wanted to see me wasting a drop of this IV fluid, and I agree with him. Um, you see a lot of people on road, they forcefully squeeze this bag and they forcefully push a volume of fluid out of the tip of that uh, giving set, maybe onto the roadside or something, just to speed up the process a little bit. Now, there are a couple of things that I really don't like about that. First of all, like my mentor, uh, he used to say, you're wasting this drug we're giving, and you'd never do that with another drug you're administering, so why would we do it with IV fluids? So that's the first thing. Second thing is, if, we, if you forcefully push fluid through this bag, through the giving set, as I said before, you get a lot of air bubbles congregating in the nooks and crannies in this actual giving set. So I don't think we should forcefully push it through. Um, third of all, if you forcefully push it through, if you push it through and waste some of those drops, usually we have the tip of our giving set hanging on the back of our tap there. And what often happens is that we get water droplets then forming on the outside of our IV fluid uh, line. And in the pre-hospital environment, especially in low light conditions, those little water droplets on the outside of the giving line or the giving set are very, very difficult to distinguish between 
air bubbles inside the hose and water droplets on the outside. And if you're in that situation, chances are you're gonna to have to restart the whole process again, which is gonna take your time, valuable time. So the idea is to do a controlled priming of the line at a pace that's not really slow, but fast enough that we can follow the actual line of fluid right through this entire giving set. We watch it fill up these nooks and crannies to make sure there are no air bubbles. Then as it reaches the top here, we just turn the tap off before we waste any. So it's a controlled priming of the line. We don't forcefully push fluid through the line because that means that air bubbles can congregate in there and we try not to waste any of this valuable uh, IV fluid that we're gonna be giving the patient. For the Paramedic Project, thanks for joining us once again. Follow us on social media and we'll see you next time.